Hello everyone, over the last few weeks we've talked about how Jesus is the Son of God. He shares in God's divine nature. And Jesus is Lord. However, a humble Lord, eternally with the Father. He came in humility to give up his life even on a cross. But some people do wonder, well, perhaps Jesus was God but only looked like a man. Or maybe he was really a man but only kind of took on Godhood a little bit from time to time. Or maybe he was God for a little bit and then stopped being God. Who knows? Maybe he only seemed to be God. The amazing thing is, Jesus, while only one person, is fully God and fully man. Today from the Apostles' Creed, we reflect on the reality that Jesus, God's eternal Son, became a man and shared in our humanity. And like each one of us, Jesus was conceived. In the Apostles' Creed it says, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hey kids, all right, got a task for you. Two pictures today. It's a shortened talk, so uh, don't need as much stuff to be doing. You can either fold your page in half like this one, or you can do two pictures, one on either side. Okay, your choice. Uh, so page one, the heading is Jesus the God man. All right, Jesus the God man. And underneath, I want you to draw only one man. That's really important. There's only one person. Jesus is only one person, but he has two natures. He is fully human, but he's also fully God. It's pretty cool. Crazy, I know. So what I want you to do is this. I want you to draw one person and they're working at a carpenter's bench. They might be hammering something, sawing something, building something out of wood, because Jesus, he grew up to be a carpenter. That's what he was trained to be when he was a little kid. Before he became a teacher, he was a carpenter. But while he's working on his tools on the workbench in the carpenter shop, I want you to draw a crazy big crown on his head with the word God on the crown. And you might want to dress him in a royal robe. Kind of funny, this guy working on a workbench in his royal robe and a massive crown with God on it. But the point is, Jesus is fully God and fully man. Thanks, kids. See how you go with that one. What was the heading again? Do you remember? Jesus, the God man. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Anyway, as we heard from our reading, Mary's engaged to Joseph. They're, they're going to get married. It's pretty cool. But one day, an angel named Gabriel approaches Mary. Now, Gabriel is an important angel. About 500 years before this, God sent the angel Gabriel to a famous prophet named Daniel. Gabriel told Daniel all kinds of things were going to happen in the future, including a time when the Messiah, the Christ, would arrive. God's saving king. So now, Gabriel's come back. He's back 500 years later, right? And he comes up to Mary, and what does he say to her? He says, Hey, favoured of God, you're going to conceive and give birth to a son. Call him Jesus. God saves. Now, of course, meeting a real angel is scary enough, but to talk like that, that's, that, that's awkward because um, she's not married to Joseph yet. Mary was betrothed to Joseph. They were legally bound to be married, but they hadn't had a wedding yet. And there couldn't actually be a baby, not only because they weren't married yet, they had remained faithful in their singleness. This comes out very clearly when Mary says, well, how can this happen? I haven't done what's necessary to become pregnant. Peter... People weren't stupid back then. No, they were, when they were old enough to get married, they knew how babies were conceived, right? And so Gabriel tells her a miracle will take place. Verse 35, I'll read it to us. He said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The Holy Spirit would surround Mary and she would conceive a child without human parentage. Man, that's crazy, hey? That's, that's huge. Conceive a child without human parentage. Now, oddly enough, if we're familiar with the Old Testament, this, this isn't so totally unexpected. It, totally, at the same time, unique, but not absolutely unexpected. 
Throughout the history of God dealing with his people, uh, time and time again, a special child would be born to parents who, well, who normally shouldn't be able to have kids or who haven't been able to have children. They're either too old or, or the children were born to women who were barren. And this, this happens so that when unusual circumstances surround the birth of a child, it, it highlights that God's about to do something special. God's about to um, enter into human history once more and, and make a big change. And there's a bit of a warning. Hey, God's about to do something. Think about it. I'm going to go through some examples. Consider Sarah. Now, Sarah is married to Abraham. And Sarah and Abraham had Isaac when she was in her 90s. Okay? In her 90s. Isaac is the ancestor of all living Jews today. Imagine that. Their great ancestor, Isaac, was born to a woman in her 90s. And then there's Rebecca. She was married to Isaac. And Rebecca, she was barren for over 20 years until she had her twins, Jacob and Esau. And then there's Rachel, Jacob's beloved wife. Now, she was childless for many years until she had Joseph, who would then later save Abraham's family from famine. Then there's another mother, Samson's mum. Uh, again, a, a miraculous birth. Uh, but what did Samson do? He, he brought down a, a major downfall to Israel's enemy, the Philistines, and their false god, Dagon. And then there's Hannah, barren for many years until she had Samuel, who was responsible for anointing both King Saul and King David. And then we have Elizabeth. Only not much before Mary, right? Elizabeth, an elderly woman who finally conceived a son. And that son was John the Baptist, the one who was going to prepare the way for Jesus' ministry. I think we get the point, don't we? So you see, God has a way of signaling a special moment throughout history by using unusual pregnancies. <laughs> but not only is this pregnancy of Mary unusual or, or super improbable, this pregnancy of Mary is impossible. It wasn't that Mary or her husband were barren. It, it wasn't that Mary was too old. She was a virgin. She hadn't done what needs to happen for someone to get pregnant. And, th and this is really, really important to who Jesus is. Now, there are two main reasons. First, Jesus was truly a man but free from the corruption of sin. Hey kids, uh, page two. All right, got your second page for you guys to do. Uh, your heading is No to Sin. And underneath, I want you to draw Jesus, and he's, he's got his back turned to sin. He's turned away. No, right? I'm not going to do it. He's got his hands out, and he's turning his back on sin. He's turning away from it. And behind him, what I want you to draw are all the things that Jesus might have been tempted with. Okay, think of uh, sinful things like lying, stealing, cheating, ignoring God the Father, rebellion, hating, hatred, whatever it is. Think of all the different things that Jesus would have to resist as God's perfect son. Son who, though he's fully human, was a little bit different from us in that he never gave in to sin. He always said no to sin. All right. Now the point is Jesus, fully man, but doesn't share in the part of us which gives in to doing the wrong thing, the part of us that wants to ignore God and his good rule over our lives. No matter how much Jesus was tempted to do the wrong thing, he never gave in to it. We give in to it, don't we? All right, thanks, kids. Jesus, who says, what was the heading? No to sin. Thanks, guys. You see, ever since our first parents, Adam and Eve, um, they rebelled against God, and they were punished by God. And every person born since them has come into the world with a rebellious nature built inside of us. You see it from the very youngest age when we are selfish. We need to be taught to be generous, don't we? No one has to teach a kid to be selfish. There's this part of us, even though we're amazing and made in God's image and beautiful and creative and, and wonderful beings, all with a dignity and honour that should never be forgotten. There's a brokenness in us too. Well, if Jesus was going to be born of human parents, how could he escape this rebellious nature? 
was because he was born through the power of the Holy Spirit. Gabriel told Mary that after the Holy Spirit hovered over her, that the child in her womb would be holy. Indeed, Gabriel identifies Jesus by the term the Holy One in verse 35. It kind of hints at even something more, doesn't it? But we'll stick with it. We'll stick with the simplest meaning at least. Holy means separate, different, not like others, set apart. As far as his human nature goes, yep, Jesus was born. He is fully human. He has experienced all the human experiences. His body was human. He is fully human. I can't make it any stronger than that. But as far as our rebellious nature goes, our sinful nature goes, our brokenness in that regard, he doesn't have it. He was not conceived through Joseph and Mary. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is a, a new creation of God. He's adding something. Uh, God the Son didn't stop being God, but he added a human nature to himself. Still the one person, but he became human. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Fully human, but without sin. Now, the second really, really important, perhaps the most important thing about the virgin birth, this, this thing is that it's, it's one that we've been talking about over the last few weeks. Again, it comes up. Jesus is fully human, yes, but he's also the eternal Son of God, and we've just got to hold on to that and not forget it. When the Son of God became a man, he didn't take over another person's body, nor did he suddenly come into existence as if he didn't exist before. No, no, God the Son, the second person of the triune God, entered into human history as a man by the work of the Holy Spirit in the womb of a virgin. Known as Jesus bar Joseph of Nazareth, is actually the eternal Son of God become man. One person, God the Son, fully God, fully man, yet without sin. And this is wonderful news because it's what qualifies Jesus. In his humanity, he's the only one who can represent us on the cross. He is a fellow human. <laughs> he's our brother in humanity. And in his divinity, in his true innocence and infinite worth, he's the only one who can pay the debt we owe. Let's hear again from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. So now the stage is set. We have a king, God's saving king, God's own son, fully human and yet fully God. Human, but without our rebellious nature, instead having the divine nature of God. I reckon we should expect amazing things from this one. This is the kind of man, this is... Ex this is the, the only one who can do what really needs doing when it comes to saving us from God's just judgment and giving us life eternal. Well, next week we're going to consider the Apostle Creed furthermore as it reminds us that Jesus suffered. Now we just heard that Jesus is God and a man. He has a divine nature and a human nature. And God, in entering into human history, is able to suffer alongside us. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It's humbling. That the creator of the universe knows what it's like to suffer as one of us. Let's pray. God, what an amazing declaration. You are going to have a son. God's son. He will be the Holy One. He'll be known as your son. He will be God with us. Father, we are humbled that you would so honour our humanity that you would take it on upon yourself in your son, Jesus. Humanity, being a human, is a very special, special thing. Lord, you came to redeem people for yourself. People who have marred our likeness, um, our special reflection of your 
character, we're made in your image, we're meant to reflect you, and yet we've broken it. We hurt each other, we, we resent things, we demand our rights at the expense of others. Lord, we thank you that you have entered into human history as a man in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fully God and fully man, perfectly equipped and able to represent us on that cross where he learnt obedience even to the point of death, death on a cross. I thank you that he has been exalted. He sits at your right hand in heaven right now and that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess Jesus is Lord. We thank you that he came here as one of us. And next week, ah, it's amazing to hear that he was willing to suffer with us too. Thank you, God, for your wonderful nature. Thank you for being a God who is a just judge, yes, but a God who delights in saving before he condemns. We thank you for being our God. We pray these things confident in the name of Jesus, our God and our brother. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, next week, we, uh, as I've already hinted, we're going to be looking at Jesus, the one who suffered. It's a pretty amazing thought. Make sure you join us next week. I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. All right. Bye.